Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Josh Does Coding. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at collision. So in this tutorial, we're going to be adding collision to our bullet from the previous projectile tutorial. So if you haven't watched that, I suggest checking it out. Link will be in the description. However, this is just a broad overview of collision. So you should be able to implement this on any actor or actors that you want. With that said, let's just hop straight into it. So the first thing you're going to do is open up whatever actor you want. So for us, it's going to be the full BP. So the first thing you have to do is come over to Add Component, and you're going to scroll down until you see Collision. And you'll see a Box Collision, a Capsule Collision, and a Sphere Collision. These all act the exact same way and can do the exact same things. They are just shaped differently, so you can pick whichever best fits your actor. So for us, we're going to go with the sphere collision, just because we're working with a sphere. So we're going to rename this to sphere coal, just for sphere collision. Now, this yellow sphere you're seeing here is the collision. Now, you don't want to edit the scale of the collision. What you want to do is you want to come down a shape and you want to edit the radius or whatever it might be for the uh, collision that you detected. Each will have its own, you know, version of radius and shape. So you can just make this bigger to make it bigger and you can make it smaller to make it smaller. We're just going to go until it looks good. Uh, you know, that's good enough for now. So once you have your sphere collision and it's all nice and tidy on your actor and you're happy with it, we can just go ahead and save. And what you can do is you can scroll down while you're on. So while you're on the collision, scroll down. And you will come down to collision. And here you can select your collision preset. So custom allows you to get full customized ability of your collision so you can choose to you know ignore overlap or block whatever you want or you can actually use some presets so no collision is well no collision block all means that everything that hits the wall will get blocked so or everything that hits the actor will get blocked so say you had a wall and it was set to block all if a player tried walking into the wall, it would stop the player. And, right, it would stop the player and block him from going through the wall. Whereas overlap all, if the wall was set to overlap, the player would still collide with the wall. The wall would know it's being collided with, except the player would be able to go through the wall. So instead of blocking it, it allows the player to go through it, but will still detect the collision. And you have block all, dynamic, which is the same thing as block all, except for only dynamic. Same with overlap all dynamic. Then you can choose to ignore only the pawn or overlap only the pawn and then have your presets for, you know, pawn, spectator, and all that. So we're going to go with overlap all. Uh, you can go with whatever you think would best suit your uh, actor. So if you do go with overlap all, you need to make sure that generate overlap events is set to true. So you make sure this box has a little check mark going through it. Then once you finish with that, you can scroll down to events and you'll see all of these events. You have on component hit, on component begin overlap, and on component end overlap. As well as all of these others. But we're just going to stick with the top three for now since they are the most basic and most commonly used, I would say. So if you're using block or block all, you'd want to use on component hits. But since we're using overlap, we're going to be using on component begin overlap. So the difference between this two is this detects when an object enters the overlap box. So this will detect when the player is, you know, standing inside of the wall. And this will detect when the player stops standing inside of the wall. So we're going to go on component begin overlap. And it will automatically add this node in your uh, event graph with on component begin overlap sphere collision. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out from our begin overlap and we're going to pull in a branch. So the way a branch works, if you aren't already familiar, is it takes in a condition and it checks if it's true or false. So it's basically an if statement. So what we're going to say is that if the other component has tag, so if component has tag, and we're going to set it to enemy hitbox. So if the other component has the enemy hitbox tag, so if that's true, we'll do one thing, and if it's false, we'll do another thing. Now you can work with other actor. So the difference here is with other actor, this will check if you hit an actor as a whole. So for example, if you have multiple hitboxes on an actor, this will check if you're hitting anything on the actor. Whereas this, you're looking for a specific component, and we are going to be looking specifically for the enemy hitbox in this example, but you can use whichever one of these you want. If you're using other actor, instead of component hashtag, you'll use um, actor hashtag. So it works all the exact same, the name's just slightly different. So if this is true, what we're going to do is we're going to destroy actor. And so, actually I'll give you an example of other actor here. What we can do is we can drag out other actor and we'll destroy it. So from branch, if true, so if we hit something with enemy hitbox, we're going to destroy the actor. And the actor we're going to destroy is going to be the other actor, which means that it will be the parents of the components that we're hitting. So again, check if the component has the tag, and then the tag can be whatever you want. Bring the return value to the condition. Check if it's true. If it's true, destroy actor and you'll destroy the other actor, as well as we're going to destroy the bullet itself. So add another destroy actor, and this time just leave it reference itself. And you are now done with your bullet BP, or whatever actor you are working on if you aren't following this tutorial. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to our content browser, and we're actually going to create the enemy. We're going to go blueprint class, character, and we'll just say enemy BP. And then we can just add a cube um, just so we can sort of see the enemy. So what we're going to do now is again come down to collision, but this time we're going to use a box collision because it just fits it best. And now you can see for shape you have box stents. Uh, extent instead of radius. So again, you're just going to want to edit the size from here. I'm not too worried about making it exact. There we go. And now what you need to do here is for the box, when you're in box, you're going to search tag and you're going to want to edit your component tag. So to do this, you click the add element button and you'll get this new um, number in the array so you can now make this your enemy hitbox just like so so this component is now tagged enemy hitbox which is what we called it over here so just double check it has to be the exact same in both of these and then you can just compile and save the enemy once you confirm that this is what you want it to be called. So, like I said, now since this is called enemy hitbox, when we hit it, it will come back true since the component will now have the tag. And of course, you can do the exact same thing for the bullet if you want. You can search, you know, in the bullet, you can search for tag. And if you want to, you can search or make it, you know, bullet. And then, you know, if you want to get more advanced, you could actually add in another, you know, on component begin overlap here in the box, but that's not needed right now. So once this is done, you can compile and save both, make sure you're all good. You can come back to the scene. 
we can add in our enemy over here and we'll add in a regular cube without the collision over here. There we go. So now this cube does not have collision and you can see the bullets travel right through it. You can see kind of coming through the back there, they travel right through it and nothing's happening to either the cube or the bullets. Whereas if you come over to the box with collision setup and we shoot it, you can see both the bullet and the cube got destroyed. So that is the basics of collision. If you want me to do a more advanced collision tutorial, let me know down in the comments. And if this tutorial did help you get some collision set up in your game, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also feel free to leave a comment on how I can improve my tutorials in the future. I am always looking for ways to improve. With that said, I hope you all have a good rest of your day and good luck with your games.